Hi, I'm Lynn Morgan, your Slippershod Pastor, hanging around today at work. Those of you who watch these videos on a regular basis, I want to give you a heads up that you may find an interruption in their usual flow because I am bereft of a computer. My computer died on me today, and I will be using the office computer to send this video out and also to shop for a replacement. But the loss of the computer is kind of secondary to the loss of the data that resided upon the computer, which I have to then transfer onto its replacement. That process can take some time, sometimes a day or two, to get done completely. So if you don't see my ugly puss on the internet for a little bit, that's not only a break for you, but it's also an indication that I am busily involved in trying to get back to normal with my computing abilities. A number of years ago, some of you probably read a very popular book by Robert Fulgham. It was entitled, Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. It's a great book. And by the way, he was a Unitarian minister, and he had a lot of wisdom, as ministers sometimes do. And then there's the exceptions, like me. But it was a great book because it told us something that we really know, which is that so often the things that we need to know in life, the real wisdom of life, often is not acquired in graduate school and, and cracking deep philosophy books. Sometimes the most important wisdom to know in life are the things that we learned as little ones, simple lessons about how to live in the world, how to be good and kind people, how to be honest and honorable. Well, today I was thinking of just one of those things that our mothers told us, which was, don't take the last cookie on the plate. I thought of that admonition from my mother while I was reading from the book of Leviticus, which is where the daily lectionary has us now that we have finished Exodus. Let me read a little bit for you from the book of Leviticus. This is from chapter 19, beginning at verse 9. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare, or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. That's what that instruction is about. Don't eat the last cookie. If you are an agriculturalist, which like almost none of us are, then they were instructed to leave behind, after they'd made their harvest, anything that the pickers had missed on the first go-round, anything that was not yet ripe that they had left on the field. Leave that for the poor. Don't glean. Don't gather every last thing that you can get. Don't take the last cookie. As I say, most of us aren't farmers, so this, this instruction probably isn't immediately applicable to us. But some of us might be employers. And how would that rule apply to us? Well, in a market society, maybe it would mean not getting the employer, the employee to work for you at the very lowest possible wage that the market will allow, but leaving a cookie for them. Maybe it would mean granting some benefits that you're not required to grant, but which would make their life better and would cost you something. There's no question. Leave a cookie for the poor. Leave a cookie for the migrant. And of course, all of us, when we think about how we pay for the good life in society, we think of our taxes, and none of us want to pay more in our taxes, let's be honest. But when we make that calculation about how much is enough, what's right, we ought not to think merely, what can I get out of this? How can I maximize the value that comes to me? But also, how might our common purse work to make sure that the very poor, the stranger, the alien, the migrant, is not left destitute. Because this isn't just a good idea. It isn't just the instruction of some political party. It's what God tells us to do. It's what our mothers told us to do. It is the right thing to do. Leave a cookie on the plate. There are people who need it more than you and me. Until I see you again, my friends, be at peace.